Here are 10 cheap cars that make you look like a baller. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And today we want to find the answer to a question that many have tried to answer, but seem to lose track of one thing. Yeah, the concept of cheap. $60,000 isn't cheap, even if it's for a used Ferrari. The point of this list is to see just how much of a boss you can look like while spending the least amount of money. And this is by no means the only list. Thomas and I have had a lot of fun finding examples from a bunch of used car websites in the US and Canada. And it's pretty nuts what you can find because to the non-enthusiast eye, a lot of cars seem way more expensive than they are. For example, driving around Toronto in my Miata, I've had a lot of people be like, yo, is that a Corvette? Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's, that's never happened. Don't tell him that though. Right, let's do this. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, before we start, what we've done is assemble these in increasing order of ballerness. And we're starting with this one, which only costs $4,000 US. A BMW 7 Series. And yeah, it's seen some life. I think it's a bit chilly in here. Why don't you put the window up? Yeah, no, I can't. You can't put the window up? No. Why? The window regulator broke. But not only is the E38 generation of 7 Series amazing to drive, it's so cool looking. Yeah, it's already a legend. And it has amazing road presence to this day. And it's filled with interior tech. Speaking of which, ah! Uh, it's a fun. It's a Does fun. it work? Which way does it go? And yeah, for this price, you could get an E65 Generation 7 Series, but that crisp bangle design is a, is a bit... Yeah. The one we tested was definitely on the cheap side, and it would probably benefit you to spend a little bit more money. But whether you get the shorty sporty spec or the long wheelbase, it's still going to be legendary. That said, don't forget the lesson we learned during our video. And in the early 2000s, there was a debate of long wheelbase versus short wheelbase. Okay. And the very astute, scholarly men of the BMW forum came to a conclusion. Okay, what was it? Ladies love the long wheelbase. <laughs> so that's, that's the one oh. to get. Number nine, the Lexus LS430. BMW limo cars can't be discussed without bringing up this little entry from Japan. Like the entire LS range across history, it offers everything that the German limos do, but at a value. And an engine that won't break. Right now, you can get a Lexus LS430 for under $3,000 US. And if you spend a little more, you can get one like this, which has heated, cooling, massaging seats, oscillating vents, and an unbelievably luxurious ride. And yeah, occasionally when you find these used, they've been slammed and blacked out. And well, I guess it kind of looks cool. It also makes them look like the site of a not so kosher business deal. So like the 7 Series, the LS430 was a cool, ahead of its time, comfortable, long wheelbase. I uh, uh, can't say that. Lit executive sedan. And it's cheaper than the 7 Series. So for that reason, it gets our number nine slot. Number eight, the 986 Porsche Boxster. It's not just limos that make you look cool, is it? How about a naturally aspirated convertible Porsche? For less than 15 grand US, you can have your very own. And yeah, enthusiasts will know that it's not the newest or the fanciest Porsche, but to everyone else, all Porsches kind of look the same. So you just became a Porsche guy for like 10 grand. And you won't just look good driving it, you'll feel good too. There's a reason that Porsche have kept to the manual, naturally aspirated, convertible, flat six formula to this day. It's brilliant. And yeah, obviously this generation of Porsche, there's a few things to look out for. These 986s have an IMS bearing that likes to fail to a disastrous end. So if you take care of that and some other stuff and make sure the maintenance is up to date, you're good. Number seven, a 2012 Jaguar XF. <laughs> Okay, so maybe the boxy lines of the 7 Series and the LS aren't quite up your alley. Or well, then maybe a 2012 Jaguar XF is. 
much more modern styling. A 5 liter V8, it's a car that is as luxurious as it is gadget filled. And unlike the German competitors from 2012, this one actually had some theater engineered on the inside. For instance, when you press that pulsating push start button, the circular gear selector lifts up into the driver's palm and rotates the four air vents into place. And I know what you're thinking. That's just another thing that's gonna break down the line, along with the other electrical gremlins that come with owning an old Jag. Well, you'd be right. But how cool would it be while it worked? Yes, it's a complicated car, and yes, parts are expensive, and yes, you'll probably need to buy them, but for $11,000 US, at least you'll have some wiggle room to own it for maybe a little while. But most of all, it's a Jag. No, James. It's a Jag. Jag. It's a Jag. It's a Jag. 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 Number six, the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. It's not necessarily any better, I think, than the LS or a 7 Series. Oh, controversial. But when it comes to limos, image is important and a badge means something. So as silly as it is, this one sits a little bit higher on the list. Even today, we get in trouble for even suggesting that something can compete with the legendary S-Class. And for value, it is hard to compete. For cheap, you can get an S-Class with cooled massaging front seats, adaptive cruise control, infrared night vision, and oodles of road presence for like 10 grand. And this particular one has a twin turbo V12. Okay, that version might not be the cheapest to maintain. That particular engine has some oil leak issues from our research and the air suspension doesn't seem to be that reliable. But whatever way you look at it, the S-Class is a symbol of success. It's a car that ensures your place as a fully fledged baller. James, we've discussed this. That word doesn't mean anything coming out of your mouth. That's because you're a baller. A, bo a, bo a baller. A baller. Oh, a baller. Not a baller. <laughs> a baller. When you say borla and baller, that's the same word. Baller, baller, yeah. It's like the name Paul. Paul. Right, now say pool, as in swimming pool. Pool. Okay, now say pull, as in pulling a lever. Pool. Okay, now I pulled Paul in the pool. Uh, Thomas, this is a family-friendly channel. What you do behind closed doors is your business. N no, no, I, never mind. Number five, a Range Rover. Yep, yeah, spend just under 10 grand and you can get yourself into a fully-fledged, reasonably mileaged pride of Britain mid-2000s Range Rover. It's a vehicle that keeps supercars company on driveways. Whether or not that's because it's up on blocks is a different story, but it has a sophisticated road presence, a perfect blend of luxury and off-roadness. It has eight cylinders of British power. It's still a boss to this day. Yeah, it's kind of for the person that goes to a restaurant and orders appetizers, mains, and dessert. Psychos. It has it all. The badge, the comfort, the looks, the performance. And at 305 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque, it's not slow. And if that's not enough, there are supercharged examples available under $10,000 as well. And for that, you get 400 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. And yeah, it's an old Range Rover. There might be a few issues. I mean, nothing major. Just like air suspension differential transmission electronics, but it's a Range Rover. And yeah, most people aren't off-roading these, and Range Rover knew that, which is why they gave it a unibody, unlike the Lexus GX at the time. But the Range Rover came with adaptive air suspension for the most extreme comfort possible. So when you're riding around town, it's pretty much impossible to break a sweat. Number four, the Rolls-Royce Silver Spur. Tell someone that you own a Rolls-Royce and they'll assume a few things about you. I don't know what they are, but they'll assume them. They don't need to know that you're driving a $20,000 Silver Spur, but even if they did, it's a Rolls Royce. From factory with a silver spoon in the center console. There is a leather stitched area well, with kind of like a- you know it. A oh, silver well. spoon. <laughs> Not kidding here. The Rolls Royce Silver Spur presents distinguished looks and suggests that the owner waves like royalty. I can't do it. Rather than a regular pleb. It's only number four because some of the most 
flashy modern Rolls-Royce features hadn't been introduced yet, like those amazing self-writing Rolls-Royce wheel hubs. Also, Rolls hadn't reintroduced the coach door yet. Yeah, the rear passenger doors open like this. Not like this, not like this, just this. That's not to say it's not without its goodies. This is a 6.75 liter V8 and a three-speed turbo hydromatic transmission and very advanced suspension, which if it breaks, you'll need Rolls-Royce themselves to fix it. Anyway, on to the top three. Number three, the Maserati Quattroporte. <laughs> Listen to that. It's the sound of the top three. Coming in at almost five foot high. So that figure's irrelevant. The Maserati Quattroporte is a Trident badged Ferrari neighboring 4.2 litre V8 Splendor to behold. And you can get one for this price, which is good because the costs won't end there. These cars are known to be plagued by a valve variator issue, which is like a variable valve timing system. That can be thousands to fix. And if you get one of the pre-07 cars, which this one is, it has the F1 Ferrari derived automated manual uh, that you basically have to always drive in manual mode or you will eat clutches. But nobody's perfect. And if you can just find it within yourself to see through all of that, then you can have yourself your very own Maserati. Right now, I tell people that I own a Mars. Just because it ends in duh and not Errati doesn't make me any less of a person. Just how nice would it be if I didn't have to lie? Number two, Bentley. Okay, so when we looked in the below 20 grand range for a Bentley, the only thing we could find was this thing. And it wasn't quite the luxury boat we were looking for. In order to buy something with the letter B on all four wheels, you're gonna have to spend a little bit more. But we're still only talking about new Honda Civic territory for a Bentley. Feast your eyes, because you can get Continental Flying Spurs for around 30 grand Canadian, or like 23 grand US. Even if the seller themselves put in the listing that it's probably not a completely intelligent buying proposition. But this is about looking like a baller, even if a Bentley at this price will probably require some upkeep. Yeah, upkeeping the fence around your house to keep out all the, all the ladies. Because it's a Bentley. This thing has a twin turbo, six liter W12. And at that price, you're paying like two grand a cylinder. It's a good deal. But if the engine wasn't enough, then yeah, it's a Bentley. That means a perfectly balanced, plush ride, incredibly comfortable interior, and in this particular one, a top speed of nearly 200 miles an hour. That made it, at the time, the fastest four-door production car in the world. And okay, so you're not gonna be going 312 kilometers an hour on the promenade, but the good news is, it still looks like a Bentley. And whilst the interior doesn't sacrifice little lambs, unlike a Rolls Royce we drove recently. James, the lambs don't die. <laughs> These ones do. No, they don't. The cavernous inside of a Bentley Flying Spur is very large and it takes 11 hides to cover it. It's lavish, it's luxurious, it's modern looking, it's thirsty for gas, it's a beacon of wealth or poor financial decisions. Either way, the point is, is that it's a Bentley for this price. And yet, somehow, in this price bracket, there's something that beats it. Number one, an AMG G-Class. Kylie Jenner, Iggy Azalea, Kim Kardashian, all G-Class owners. And who wouldn't want to join their ranks? I mean, we're sure some humans have bought some too. But that's beside the point because it doesn't get more flash, more look at me than a side piped growling V8 G-Class. Body on frame, absolutely terrible driving dynamics and an S-Class interior. And it can be yours for under $30,000 US. We've actually had the privilege of driving a G55 AMG. You should watch that video. And here is the best news. To the untrained eye, which is most people that still think that the G-Wagon is the height of cool, 
they haven't changed the styling in decades. So for all they know, you're driving around in a $200,000 celebrity containing, red light running, parking ticket not paying machine. Basically, you're an astute car buyer who knows a deal when he sees one. And if you really want, it has off-road jobs too that could make a Range Rover cry in the corner. It's the whole package. It's the ultimate luxury baller car. And for that reason, it makes the top of our list. Oh, you're still here, okay. You know, it's funny, a lot of people think that because of the stained glass windows, I'm being held hostage in some church tower somewhere. I am. Help, please! Okay, I'm actually not. And if you follow us at The Throttle House on Instagram, you'll see an explanation for why there are stained glass windows next to me. You'll also be able to see stuff like exclusive Instagram-only car reviews, some stupid two truths and a lie, and maybe in time for the next video, I'm gonna get someone who's not qualified at all to cut my stupid hair. So make sure you follow us.